Good morning, and then this is Nana, and then I am going to conduct a CRP for Al Faisal, <coughs> and then with me Chudamani is there. And then uh, we have already sorted out an agenda for this morning. <coughs> this is agenda for this morning. So we initially conducted a CRP one, and then uh, there were some observations, and then uh, the compliance of CRP one is now recorded over here, and then we are going to show it to you. Some 11 points are there. We will now go one by one. First is what I am now going to create an item. So let me create an item. So let me take one some pra practical example from your system now. So if you see, you have so many things are available here. Let us take a, this Rusker Cheese Germany. Fine, this one I want. But I will not use the SQL. The SKU code, I am not going to use it now. I will be using it in the UIT actually. In UIT everything will be actually done. In CRP, we will now have a test item which will be having this description as such. Okay, fine. And then this unit submissions. Okay, fine. So let us go there and then see this now. <clears throat> so if you go there and then see this now. Let us log in with uh, Chudamani's login. Chudamani not booted at uh, welcome. One to three is the password. W caps. Click on login and then uh, we are now going to create an item. So the first activity of this CRP is an item creation. I go to the product management now. I click on the product management and then go to the product information management over here now. Click on product information management over here now. So it goes to the next screen now. <clears throat> so wherein we are now going to create an item. An item will be created. So let me go and then click on this one, click on it, click on this icon and then click on create an item. So I am going to create an item now. <clears throat> so let us go and then choose the organization. The organization is the master organization which is M100. Fine. The item class is the root item class. Root item class is the one which I am going to choose now. So let me choose the purchased item template now. Purchased, sorry. Purchased item template. And then let me bring it to the item side. And then let me give OK. By which we are now going to get a new item. So, so many test items have been created. So here, <clears throat> I will now create one item called test underscore item 15 with the description of this excel sheet. Let me take a copy of this description and then put that onto my item. So it's a combination of RB as well as English as such. Okay, fine. So this has been done now here. I go down and then I go to the specification part of it. And then let us say, I am going to buy it. The units of measures has to be changed, first of all. It should be tins now. Fine. So we will now change the units of measures now. I go to the inventory part. Uh, not exactly over here now. The generic part, you go to the overview part. The primary units of measures, which I am going to make a change to what? Tins now. T A N S tins. Okay. So let me minimize it, and then I go to the overview part in which what happens? I drop it down, and then change the primary units of measures to tins now. It comes in the generic one, and then afterwards I go to the specification. Do you know the price of this rascal cheese? One tin and all the question. Yeah. Okay. Any any idea around five kg? Seven and a half kg. Seven and a half kg. Okay. So I am not going to give. Go to the purchasing and then let me give the purchase price of this product as seven kg now. I go there. The list price is seven. Seven is the seven kg. Demand was. So I have updated the list price and then later on it will keep on changing on every purchase orders. Okay. Fine. So I have given on the overview page the new units of measures of this item as tins now. And then on the specifications page, I have done what? The price is 7KWD. Right. Click on save. 
and then I associate it to my child log. Click on the association and then let me associate to my child log. Remember, it is test under test underscore item 15 now actually. I, I go there. I am now going to go to actions and then select an act. <clears throat> and then organization is what? Child organization 101. And then let me query it now. Oh sorry, it is C101. And then let me find it out. So this is organization. I will not apply and then done. So I am now associating to the child also. The item has been associated to the child. And then having done this, I click on save as well as save and close. By which the item is now fully defined. And then it is ready for placing a purchase order. That's it. Yeah, that's it. This is a manual way of doing it. Oh. And I will teach you about how to upload the item automatically once when the CRP is complete. During UAD phase, we will upload all the items with the exact SKU code along with the actual descriptions and all the relevant parameters. So once when the CRP is complete, the next phase will be going for complete item upload. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Want to stop us online? Now, having done this, the item is now fully created. Let us go to the Excel sheet and then have a look at it. Now, let us go and then create a PO for this now. Fine. The initial problem on CRP1 is what? The destination was shown as only expense. Now, the inventory is also coming up now. This is a, always it will come manual process or a, this way we have... PO is always manual. P is all product entry. Eh? One. Product entry is not always manual. Okay. Fine. You have the option of manual as well as automatic. Many automatic. Many times we are working as manual, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many times you are working as manual now. Fine. So manual item creation is now shown to you. Fine. Automatic item creation also will be shown to you. Oh. Fine. Okay. Fine. That will be a one-time exercise. Oh. And then later on you will be doing it manually. Whenever a new yeah, item comes yeah, in. Item easy for us. Easy for us to do. Fine. When, when you have a bulk item, then we can go for automatic upload. <clears throat> Fine. So we'll be seeing the upload also automatically. Yeah. So let us go to the PO creation now. <clears throat> so let me go and then click on this home page. Click on this home page. And then here I am now going to create a purchase order for this one of item test underscore item 15. So here I go to the procurement on the home page in which I will now go to the purchasing tab. Click on the purchasing tab. So now we are into the purchasing area in which we are now going to create a yeah, purchase order for this item, the newly created item. So we are going to have a look at it, but how? It's all created and then shown to us now. For this, we have one supplier called test supplier. So with the test supplier, I am going to test this test item 15. And then I will now demonstrate to you about how the entire process is going to work. So I click on the right hand side on this place. In this icon I'm taking on it after having landed upon the purchasing area. I go there and click on the create order. I am going to click on create order. So once when I go and then create an order, it goes to one more screen now. Yeah, window pops up in which you have to put your supplier over here. So for this case, it is test, TST, and then the supplier comes over here now. All other relevant details gets automatically populated over here. And you are the buyer, and then click on create by which everything is automatic. No need for you to do any activity at all. Right? Apart from populating the supplier name. Supplier name only you have to populate. Fine. The rest are all automatic. Click on create. So by creating it, what happens? We are now going to create a purchase order. We are now going to create a purchase order. So the purchase order screen comes over here now. In this one, bottom one, you go there and then click on add a line. Click on plus and then add a row. So we are going to add a row for this now. 
<coughs> so let me add a row here it is test underscore item 15 test underscore item 15 no one so as and when you type in what happens it will be coming up automatically on this place now i will not choose this item and then you can see the description coming with english as well as arabi so both of them are now coming up now over here so arabi and then english descriptions are coming up over here so click on this one the sub inventory information if you know we can give it otherwise you can leave it as it's now while we are receiving it we will now give the sub inventory in which sub inventory you want to receive it if you are not sure about it we will not do it while receiving previously there was a problem on this destination the destination was only expense not inventory is also coming so this is a problem on crp1 on crp1 the destination was only expense now you have the option of choosing it as the expense or inventory but in your case all of them are inventory items fine you don't have any expense items at all because expense items are mainly service items or what happens you are having a low cost items which will be expense items but in your case everything is significant and they are all going to manufacturing and so what happens you have to choose this as only inventory you go for that you go for that and then i will now say 100 quantities 101 i will not one not one quantities you go there you put your quantity of how much you need it now and then go further go further and then you say when you want it this is the day you want it or this is the date given by the supplier one of the date is a mandatory one fine the promised delivery date or the requested delivery date one of them is so this is the date you want it whereas that is the date he is giving it now fine let us say 31st the one on which you need it and that's it the purchase order is now ready for approval now the purchase order will be sent for approval as such now so before i go further and then process this one let me save it now first fine. having given this and here what happens we can even give some additional information so let's find it you are not going to give additional information over here now i go to the sorry i go to the notes and attachments in the notes and attachments i will now say please provide warranty certificate or whatever is relevant to you, you will be writing it for the supplier, right? supplier. So I will now say, please, uh, which one you will ask for? I will now give a practical one if you know it. For us, do you ask anything from you? Please provide. Please provide the latest production date. Okay. Uh, latest production date. Fine. Yes. And then to the note to the receiver, you will now ask him. Uh, uh, you will now ask for fine. Check for physical damages. Fine. So in the notes and attachments, you are now going to put a message for the supplier as well as note to the receiver. Fine. And they will all be printed on the purchase orders. So whatever you are writing it will be printed also. But whatever you want to write, you can write over here and they will all be printed on the purchase orders. And then how you want to communicate to the supplier? Fine. By email. I will not choose this as an email and then let me put my email ID over here so that what happens I can demonstrate over here itself apps.nana at gmail.com I am putting it so in reality it will be supplier's email ID the supplier's email ID will be coming up over here now so in the notes and attachments we are now given a note to supplier as well as a note receiver fine and then we are now given a communication method also so only this much of information is necessary for you to do it item and then afterwards if you know the sub inventory value you want to wait the 7 kd is now getting defaulted to the item if you feel now 7 is not the correct price now it's 8 you can override it now fine with the 8.000 you can override the price which has got defaulted from the item as such fine that can be done and then having done this fine you give either one of these dates and that's it the purchase order is ready for approval fine we are going to send it for approval so let me first of all save it now so 10061 is the purchase order which is going to be approved set for approval so before i go for approval what happens let me go and then see about how the approvals have been configured on this now fine so let me go and then see about how the approvals have been configured on this now so let me go there 
open up a new one. I will now I'll face a test. I will now see that approvals configuration on this now. So here you have got two such people now. Fine. Let me go to the procurement. This is the person who is now responsible for configuring all the activities on the system as such now. Fine. Uh, in fact, you will be given the role. So because since you don't have much of people here, so you will be given the super user role also. <clears throat> Fine. You will be given the super user role also. <clears throat> So the super user role will be given to you and so you, you yourself will be at a later stage doing all the setups. Whatever setups which is required, you will be doing it as such in this place. So I will now show you the present level of approvals in this in your login itself. When I go there, I go to this thing. So <clears throat> Let me go and then click on your name and then there you will now find up on setup and maintenance area in which I will now query one task. I am going to query one task. So let me close all these things now. Fine. What is it? Now saying yes. Okay. Let me close it. 10061 is the purchase order number remember and then we have only saved it and then we have done nothing as such. So we go to the setup and maintenance area and then here I will now say manage purchasing doc approvals. Sorry. So I am now going to go for manage purchasing document approvals. We will now see about how it has been configured. Every time we need to type this thing. Yeah. Man per doc set, uh, approvals. Fine. So whenever you have to do that, you have to type that on the one. I will again show you about how to do that now. Fine. I will not give it done now. So you have to write like this. Man percentage per percentage doc percentage approval percentage to come over here. Now. Fine. So you click on this task now. Manage purchase document approvals. So the moment you click on this task, you will not find any, any option to put in default level. No, we don't have any such option like this. No. I will think over it. Fine. Yeah, if yeah. I am able to get anything, I will definitely let you know. Fine. I will ask our team also to bring that one as a ready, yeah. ready-made ta task line sort of thing. So here you are in this place, and then I will now click on the edit rules. Click on the edit rules. In the edit rule, <clears throat> we have for test purposes configured two such things. One is automatic approval and then one approval will be close. Okay, fine. So, one second, I think the audio is no because of internet problems. It is giving me a... So, I will again show you this part. Fine, I will not cancel this now. After having come to this manage purchase document approval, you choose the one which is having a tick mark and then click on edit rules. So one when you click on edit rules, there are two rules which have been made now. You see this one. The second rule is basically automatic approval only for test purposes. The first rule says what? You need an approval. Approval is required from this approval group. The mic close is there. My close is there. So my close mail ID has been set to my mail ID. I will now make an insurance that it is not set to my mail ID. So that what happens whenever we send any approvals to him, what happens? It will be uh, what's called uh, he will be basically responding back on that. So this rule is on. The other rule is not on. Anyhow, we are here to help you out throughout. And so no need to worry at all. Fine. It may be looking too much for you at this stage now. But it doesn't matter. We are there. We will be doing all the activities for you and then we will now give it to you. Why I am teaching you is that after two, three years time, when you want to make a change, when nobody is there, you must be in a position to run this video and then make the changes now. So this is what is. So it needs an approval by one of the approval group as such now. Fine. 
So let me go there and then see Miklos, what's called mail ID now. It has to get uploaded by Miklos as such now. I click on that. So I have to go to one more task. I will now ask for a task called what? Create IMP percentage. If you run this concurrent, if you run this one, it will now take you to one Oracle Identity Manager. This is called Oracle Identity Manager. One more page will open up in which let me query my uh, Miklos login now and then see what are the mail ID I have given. Not to worry much basically at this stage. Uh, uh, it will come by practice basically. <clears throat> now I am going to make a change of the Miklos ID, mail ID to my mail ID so that what happens all the notifications will be sent to me now as such now. I go to Oracle Identity Manager and then here <clears throat> let me go and then query Miklos. So Miklos is the one M-I-K-L-O-S then give enter. So it shows you Miklos for a so I click on his name, the name will be coming up over here. So here I will now go there and then see. So it's only my mail ID. Initially test what happens, I have given only my mail ID. Right. So I came to this page only to test whether it comes to my mail ID or not. Right. So this is called Oracle Identity Manager in which we can very well make a change of the email ID and then the usernames and then there are certain things which you can override right. that I'll be teaching you a bit later now. So let me close the screen straight away. Now I am going to give a approval now. If I click on that, let me go to the purchase orders again. 10061, remember the purchase order has been made now. So let us go and then approve that purchase order. You will now see about how the flow takes place on the system now. I go to the procurement now. And then I go to the purchasing on this now. Any doubts then and there you ask me. So let me edit this purchase order. I am going to edit this purchase order. So you click on, I click on this icon again and then here what happens I go to manage orders. Initially I created an order, now I am going to manage the order. These are the two things which will be using it to a great extent. Now manage orders. So 10061 is a one, so you can see they are now having it and then there is a writing there, fine, notes exist on this, fine orders. So let me click on this 10061, it is going to open up now. So once when it opens up, we are now going to submit it for approval. So the moment I submit for approval, you can see everything is there and we have given the notes and attachments also, one note to the supplier and then one note to the receiver. Check for physical damages, please provide latest production date or whatever it is fine for us. So you go there. So let me go to actions and then edit the document. Whenever you are opening a document through manage orders, we have to edit the document and then submit for approval now. 10061. So let me go and then submit it for approval. So that will be sent to me close. But make close mail ID is my mail ID. So I will be getting a mail from the system that it needs an approval. And click on submit. So now Miklos can have a look at it. Now, fine. The document has been submitted. 10061 has been submitted. So we wait for a certain time and then we can now see a mail coming on my mailbox. On my inbox now. So let me go on and do it now. So here if you see, if you click on the email inbox. So it will take some time because it has to come through the system as such now. Fine. Through the cloud system, it will be dispatching it to various mail addresses now. So once when the mail comes in, Miklos will open up and then have a look at it. He is now going to have a look at what exactly is required. So then he will now take up an action on this. Now. Yeah, your mail has come now. So a mail has come now, action required. He will now click on it. He will now go down and then there is an attachment which has been given to him now. So he can now click on download or he can directly view it also. If you click on this one, you can view it. Otherwise what happens, you can even download the attachment. 
is the one PDF document. So let us download it now or let us view it as such. If I click on it now, we are going to view it now. It says this is the one, the company name, so and so, and what else? Point of contact is what? Uh, it will be your mail ID actually. It has been kept as my mail ID. You are the point of contact. And then your phone number also. I don't know the phone number, so what happens? We are unable to give it. So your phone number will also be coming up over here now. And the payment terms is coming up over here on this place. Fine. So the purchase order number is 10061. So this is the item and then this is a description, Raska cheese. Fine. The need period is 31st. The quantity is 101. It is intense. The unit price is 8 KWD. The net amount is 800. It comes in amount in words also. 800, <coughs> uh, 808 and 0 KWD. Fine. And you can see the note to supplier is also coming. The note to receiver is also coming. So he will now have a look of all these things now in this place. Fine. And then finally he will now take a decision. This is now coming with a watermark of grab. Got it now? Fine. So this is the one which is going to go to the supplier exactly. Got it? Okay. Now, after approval, after, before approval, it's, before approval, he is now seeing this. Supplier can see. Before. No, Miklos is not oh, seeing yeah. it. Miklos is now having a look at it completely. Yeah. Fine. With the draft as a watermark. Fine. With a note to supplier as well as a note receiver. Now he will not decide whether to approve or not. So it's in Miklos login. So let me go there, let us say that he is going to decide to approve. So here, what happens? He has got two actions of either approve or reject. And click on approve action now. So on this place, what happens? You have to educate him or we have to educate to him about what happens. In the commands field, he has to write. The, the brackets should be kept as such now. Okay. Approved for purchase. Fine. And then delete the remaining ones. So we have to educate him that we should not remove this square brackets and then write whatever his comments is. Fine. And then he will now click on send. His approval will be sent back to the system as such. And click on send now. Now the message has been sent now. Fine. So he has now sent the message now. And remember the supplier's email ID, I have given my personal mail ID. So supplier will be getting a mail from you. You are the purchase officer. Okay, fine. So from the purchase officer, the supplier will be getting a mail. That so and so thing has been approved now. Got it now? Now let us go there and then have a look at it now. So here in this system, fine. So 10061, click on done now. Let us requery the purchase order. After some time, what happens, you are going to inquiry. You have given it to Miklos, Miklos is approved or rejected, he might have even rejected it. So I will now click on this again and then click on manage orders. So we are going to click on manage orders. So on clicking on this manage orders, if you see 10061 is not at all available because it is already in open status now. 10061, sorry, it is there, it is in open status now, sorry. 10061 is there. If you click on it, open means what? The purchase order is approved. Yeah, open means ready. Ready now. Fine. You click on it. And then you will now have a look at it now. You will now have a look at it. And then when you open it up, you can even view the PDF from here itself. You click on view PDF. You can now view the PDF of this purchase order here. How the purchase order is going to look like. I will now again save it first of all. Without saving it, we cannot view it now. I click on the desktop area and click on save now. So it is now done. Click on show all documents. Open it up. Now as a purchase officer, you will now look at it. There will not be any draft watermark. Mm -hmm. So the exact PO with the note to supplier, note to receiver, etc. etc. the payment terms, everything is now shown to you. Okay. And then the same copy has been communicated to the supplier also. Any approval is just no approval status will not be coming yeah. here. What happens? You have to only physically write on this now. Authorized signature. Somebody has to approve it. If you want to send a post, if you want to send a post, somebody has to sign over here or whatever uh, office controls you want to have. Apart from that, you don't have any approvals. Rather, uh, approved by big close or those things will not be coming. It will not be coming. That is a normal normal format. Now, if you go and then see the supplier, 
supplier he is a supplier now actually so if you click on it so i am now going to the supplier's login so it does not come from your mail id right so chudamani has sent the supplier a mail now he will not have a record right now the supplier will not have a record right. the same one we are getting all the time this is supplier's login now. so by this process what happens the our successive approvals get a draft as a watermark in the bottom with the same format whatever you are going to send it that is available and then upon approval what happens you will also be able to see through view pdf as per this the supplier also will be communicated to his email id the exact purchase of right and then the next one is what you have told uh, miklos has told that what happens the attachment size should not be more than what uh, more than more 2 mb in size if you see the size is also very limited only so let me go there and then show it to you let me download this now and then show it to you so let me download it so it's showing you only 103 kb <clears throat> so it's less than that now fine or not or not 3 kb so if you go on and show it click on save and then let me show it on this place it should be less than this now that is what you need it now so show in folder if you see it is 104 kb only so if you see the agenda point on this now po attachment has to go as a pdf is going as a pdf now fine file size of attachment should not exceed 2 mb now it is less than 2 mb fine po output to supplier must have company logo now it's having a company logo Invoice. So up to point number five is now completed. We are completed up to point number five. Right. So now the next point is point number six. We like to have a break and then let's continue. Or otherwise, shall we continue? Or else? We'll continue. Okay, we're good. No. Yeah, I don't know. Next is what invoice and expiry date tracking during PO receipt. Right. This is what the next point is. So point one to five have been completed. as per the requirement now invoice and expiry date need to be tracked fine so i will not teach you about how to track whatever information you want fine uh, rather uh, i will not show you on this one about the invoice and expiry date tracking is has already been configured now fine i will not show you this now so let me go there and then show you this close it close tab <coughs> If I go there, here, let me go and then go to the receipts now. Now we are going to go into the receipts part of it now. And click on it. One zero six one, one zero zero six one is the purchase order now. I go to the Varos operations on this now, and then I go to the receipts. I click on the Varos operations and then click on receipts. so now we are in the process of making a receipt we have to choose the organization as c101 now and then click on okay on this now let me receive it now okay so having given this as okay it will now accept it and then it will now go to the next screen now right. here You go there and then click on this icon. Receive expected shipments. You click on it. Receive expected shipments. So once when you click on it, so the purchase order number I am going to put it as one zero zero six one on the new tab. And then click on search now. I am searching on it now. So the purchase order in which we are now going to perform a receipt. And then make the due date as null. Make the due date is not purchase order is there. You click on search now. So give the purchase order with the due date is null. It will now show you the purchase order over here in the bottom. You select the line and then click on the receive button. And you click on the receive button. So 
we are now going to perform a receipt for this particular one now. So the person on your inventory side has to be taught about how to do this now. Right? Let us say 101 is the quantity. He is now receiving, let us say, 75 quantities on this item, on the 75 quantities amount. On which sub-inventory he is going to receive, he has to make it now. Right? He will now drop down and then he will now put the sub-inventory information. So in which one he is going to receive it, let us say RM sub-inventory. And then he will now perform the creation of a receipt now. If I click on create receipt by which a receipt is getting made for the particular one. And then here we have configured the additional information as invoice number. He must have given you an invoice number. Point one, two, three. And later on what happens? Miklos told that no need to record the expiry date. But you wanted the expiry date, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, when it is going to expire, but Nicholas told that no. But later on, you again discuss with him, and then when you are making a receipt, the invoice number as well as an expiry date, we can very well configure it. And as of now, I am not configured because Nicholas didn't want it now. So, having given this, and then if the vehicle which is coming, it's the shipment number, the packing slip number. So, if you know more information about the dispatches made by the supplier, you can even fill up those informations, so that there will be a record in your system. They are not mandatory as such now. So if you want, you can do it. Otherwise, you can leave it as such. The additional information is also not mandatory. And then if you are putting it, it will be giving you more information on this. Click on submit by which what happens? The receipt gets made for 75 quantities. I click on submit. The receipt is now made for 75 quantities. So receipt is now made. Fine. Click on OK. It's completed. Now let us go and then check the stock now. And click on done and then let us go on and check all the stock. So I go to the inventory area and then I'm going to check it now. I made the receipts now. I go to the inventory. So warehouse has got three such operations in which what happens? You can now see this now. So the item is what? Test underscore item 15 is an item. So let me go on and search on it now. Fine, if you say it's now 75 quantities, on which sub-inventory it is residing, it will not show. Organization is this in which it resides on RM sub-inventory. So to that extent it will now show you the stock in which its sub-inventory is available. If a particular item is now available in multiple sub-inventories, then also it will now show you all the stock. Got it? Summary it will come here. And the summary it will now come in the top. And then the detailed breakups will be shown over here. Okay. So let us go on and see this now. So invoice number and uh, need for the discussions. If you want, the expiry date also will be configured. I think Mr. Miklos is saying that whatever quantity we issue to production, mm -hmm. they are not required for the production and expiry date. Ah. But whatever we receive from the supplier, ah. we need it. We need it. No, and you convince it. No, no, and then I will like, I can explain. I can explain. And then we will now configure the expiry yeah. date also. Fine. Yeah. You are very correct. What you are saying is correct. I will configure that and then yeah. I will take it. Fine. That will discuss and particular issue to production. Exactly. They're not required for production. They're not required. But whatever is result on supply, yeah. supplier, that is recommended. That is recommended. Also remember. It's a good one. So you discuss as soon as he comes back and then I will know how uh, configured that also. Right. Sixth point is not completed. Seventh point is basically only for the cost accountant actually. It is for costing. So once when a cost accountant comes in, I will now teach him about all the part of this costing as such. It is not related to warehouse. It is not related to warehouse. I know my top five issues were not costed actually. Now it is all fully costed. Mm -hmm. So I will be discussing or showing it to the cost accountant about how the costing takes place. Now issue to van sales need not be recorded. Van sales issues. That is what Miklos was telling. You tell him if you want, we will now remove it. This can be removed as such. Then next is item categories for peoples. Remember? So if you go on and see this stage, fine. You have item categories. Let me go there and I'll show it to you. On the, this part. Fine. Uh, you have asked for one second. Show the money. 
you have asked for two such categories now basically. Uh, I will not find out, try to find out the main which you are asking. One second. categories for purchase. If you see this now, you have asked for these two records to be made for the raw material and then one for the back material. Yeah. Only three. So I will not teach you about how to make it on the system. So is it final or I will, uh, is final? No? Fine. So there are all the two categories which are required now. So raw material, imported raw material local and then pack material. So let me show you about how to make it on the system. Okay. Now here we go there and then here I will have to go on and make this one. So for which what happens I will now go to one task. Fine there is a task. Whenever you want to have a task you click on your name and then go to setup and maintenance. You go to the setup and maintenance. And then there <clears throat> we will now have the task done clearly for you. So it's called manage catalogs. There's the task name now. So I am going to go this task name. And then this is not a frequent exercise now, but whenever required, we are doing it now. Manage catalogs. Manage catalog is one. So let me click on this manage catalogs. Right. Uh, manage key flux fields per catalog. Manage one second. I've forgotten the exact task name as such in this place. So it's manage catalogs actually. I click on it. Manage catalogs is the one. So we go to the manage catalogs area, function area, in which we are now going to add two categories for purchasing actually. Purchasing categories we are going to add now. So it has got two segmental information. So those two segmental information has to be given over there now. So let us go on and add the two segmental information on this particular one. Now I have gone to the manage catalogs in which I will now choose the purchasing and then I will now click on edit now. So the edit button is now pressed. So the purchasing catalog is going to be edited and then we are going to add two categories as desired by them now. If you see this now. First is raw material imported now. Fine, let me take a copy of this first segment. So the first segment is raw material. I will go there. I will now click on it. Not this one. Here, what happens? You drop down. In the default category, I'm dropping down. I click on the drop down menu, in which I will now click on create. Now, I'm going to click on the create icon. Drop down and then click on create, in which the new category will be created. As such. Fine. So, the category name, I'm putting it as what? Raw material. And then here it is imported. So let me take a copy of this. It's imported now. The one. Sorry. So I go there. And then I'm going to put it as imported. The full name is what? The full name. The full name. I'll take a copy of it. You go there. And then put it on this as a full name. And the description is also given. Fine. So it has got two segmental information of raw material and then imported. The full name is raw material imported. Click on OK by which the category is now created. One second. I'm sorry. What I made it, I made a mistake. The commodity values have to be populated and then only what happens it can be done now. So I have to make one more step before we do this now. Fine. <clears throat> 
So we will now continue on the next video on uh, this particular part of it, on the categories part. Right? So we are now closing the session because this room needs is needed for meeting now. So we will now continue on the next session. Thank you.